Welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about drip trees and reductive tree. I'm going to show you two different ways of how I do my trees. This is one of the things that I, one of my more popular workshops that I do in Artisan Expo coming up pretty soon in Santa Fe and also at Art of the Carolinas. Oh my gosh, that's so great. And that's always in Raleigh. So these are the two workshops that I'll be doing. And let's get right into the materials. Let me show you the materials. I'm going to be doing acrylic paint. These are the Holbein acrylic paints. I have my Fabriano paper. I love my watercolor paper. This is 300 pound Fabriano paper. All right. So let me start off with number one. The first one, I'm going to do two. The first one is a mess. I love making a mess. And this is a good lesson to learn in case you do a tree or any kind of a painting and it's an abstract and it just turns into a mess. Don't stop, don't fret. I'm gonna show you how to do some negative shape painting, also known as reductive tree painting. So let's start off with a mess. I have my watercolor paper. I have large, big brushes, paper towels, a lot of water here. We're going to start off with just paint all over the crazy place. Yay, fun, all over the place. Lots of water, lots of acrylic paint. Throw it all over the place. I love doing all this. Who knows how it's gonna turn out? Start off really, really, really crazy wet. I'm even going to put in some yellow in here right now. Why not? Put a little bit of yellow right in here. Wet the brush. Always wet the brush first with water. Oh, wow, look at these. This is going to be a beautiful color. Under every great painting, I always like to say it's a great abstract painting first. So start off crazy, just like this. Throw a little bit of water all over the place. And now we're going to let it dry because now I'm going to go to the other technique. Two techniques. This is making a mess, but right now I'm going to do the drip tree. It's a great way to start at the beginning. Here we go. Let that dry for a little bit. I'm going to bring in the drip tree. Let's start. We're going to be doing two paints all at the same time. I love that stuff. So here we go. One of the things I like to do is wipe, wipe a color over the entire surface. I'm even going to take a little bit of hot pink, that opera. Crazy stuff, right? Look at that. Wonderful. More yellow. Acrylic. I'm really on a roll now. I'm gonna add more opera. I pink. Make it crazy. Don't make it normal. Anybody can do a normal painting. Let's be, have one a little more, more creativity. Now this is what I do at this point because I rubbed it in. It's fairly dry because I rubbed it in. Now this is where you do what I like to call my drip trees. So I'm wetting, wetting a lot of acrylic down. The big brush, put a lot up in here, just a lot. Oof, oof. Put a little blue, more water. That's pretty wet. And now, here we go. Fantastic. Help it out with, oh, look at that, how that turned out. That's great. So we have lots of little ones in here. One big one over here. And now we're gonna let it dry and we'll come back to it and do it again with a different color. So we'll have all these different colors. So usually it looks like this at the very beginning. Pretty simple. And I'm going to start building up more colors, more colors. Let it dry in between. Oh my gosh, even more colors. Just keep building it up, building it up. And eventually it gets to the point where it has so many colors and it's all dripping. It's just great. And then you let it dry. Let me show you what I do next. So now that I've made the mess, I'm gonna put it aside, let it dry. Why do I do a mess? These trees here, this painting, started out as a mess. It was completely gone. Here's another one. 
completely gone. I overpainted it. Don't freak out. You can always save it. I'm gonna show you how to save it. These trees here are the other way, the drip trees. You can see variations of drip trees here too, where I put a lot of paint on it and let it drip down. You'll see behind me variations of this. I'm still, I'm still working on these. So here we have some more drip trees. I love it. Lots of different colors, not just one color. Here's another drip tree. This here over here happened to have been one of those messes. Here's a drip tree. Here's one. I'm going to get started on it right away. This will be a drip tree. I'm going to do some negative shape painting. Let's get started. Always start with a big brush, a wide brush. No tiny little hair. You can't do anything with a brush like that. Big brush, bold, strong. Now let me show you about some negative shape painting. Here's one where I put a lot of paint on the top and let it drip down. Now it's dried. Now I'm going to do some negative shape painting. I'm going to take white. That's what makes the paint so opaque. There we go. Fantastic. So I happen to like the orange red background. It's almost like it's sunset. So now I'm going to get rid of the part that doesn't look like trees. This is the part where I just make it all up. You see where they're coming? They're coming alive. That tree is coming alive. I also don't worry about my color wheel at this point. I'm looking at the graphic shapes of this, making the tree an interesting shape. So I don't want them all to be the same. Look different colored backgrounds. Look, they look like tree branches after a while. Different sizes. Even that color that's way in the background looks like a tree way far away. See? Here, and the dark ones come forward. Come forward. The light ones recede and go away. See? They go far away. The dark trees come forward. And I work all the way across. Has a nice tempo. Loose abstract all the way across, all the way across, working like that. So I'm looking at contrast, mostly contrast. I like to leave one area open a little bit. It's a little whiter, almost like the sun's right behind it, or the moon's. Look at how it glows behind it a little bit. Gives it more, even more contrast. So it's not the same color all the way across. One spot, one spot is going to be the brightest, better known as the focal point. See how it starts to glow? I work all over at the same time. Don't stay in one area. Gives it that wonderful excitement. Now these are like little forest trees. And I need to do the top part still. Let's do the top. These are little small trees. Quiet trees, all right? Very graphic. Now, right now they're pretty solid. Almost looking like lollipops. So you wanna open it up a little bit with sky holes and this is where the drip comes in, nice and wet, really wet, and you drop droplets like this. It opens it up a little bit. We call them sky holes, right? Let the birds fly in. Don't have them all the same size either. There we go. And that's how I open up the trees. I'm just doing one section here, just one section. Pain with my fingers too at the same time. So that's how I develop my trees for the, the drip trees. Now let's go to the singular tree, the same thing, but different. So here's the painting, it's pretty much dried by now. This was that mess. I'm going to turn it into a single tree. This looks like an old oak tree, which I love so much. It has a lot of character.
Alrighty, really old has looks like it comes alive. So let's see if I can do that with this mess. Alrighty. So remember, mess on one side, not on the other side. I have some double back tape. Stick it on the back here. And I put it on the table so it doesn't slide around all the time like that. Now I'm going to get rid of the part that doesn't look like a tree. So I have a lot of white, titanium white, or even gesso. It's very opaque. So now I do negative shape painting. Here we go. I mix some yellow in here, a little bit of that opera. Give it kind of that glow, that orange pink. Oh yeah. So there's a tree in here somewhere. Here we go. I'm gonna make sure that this is the ground and the tree is here. Here we go. Now this takes a little bit of visualization too at the same time. You have to pretend you really see a tree in here. So you get rid of the part that doesn't look like a tree. So I'm painting the ground and the tree at the same time. They have a lot of personality in these old funky trees. They've been around for about a hundred years or so. Now I'm gonna get rid of this part. I don't need it. Just like that. So I look at the shape, make sure I like the shape. Let's get some tree trunks in here. Tree branches are branching out. There we go. Maybe up in here, here it opens up a little bit more. So this is all about painting negative shape painting, negative pa shapes. Rubbing with my fingers here a lot too. I love that. And there's some also painting upside down. You can see it quicker. Branches in between. Open it up a little bit more up in here in the sky. This is just the beginning. I wanted to show you the beginning. I'm not gonna finish the whole tree, but it's, it's pretty close. So I make sure that the tree has a whole lot of personality. You know, we make it all up. I'll see you at Artisan in Santa Fe or Art of the Carolinas in Raleigh. This is only one of those workshops. I do lots of them. I hope to see you there. They're wonderful programs, lots of paint, lots of artists, and lots of instructors. You'll see us there. I can't wait to see you. Take care. Hey painters, have you ever felt like you just needed to give yourself some time out and just go away and paint just for you. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and let me tell you about one of my most favorite places to go and paint in Mexico. I was writing it all down in my journal, and I was reading it back to myself, and I said, you know, this really reads pretty well. I'd much rather read it to you as opposed to trying to remember. But this is all about me going down and doing a painting workshop for two count them, two one-weekers back-to-back -back in one of my most favorite places, 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta in, my, in our own casa, filled full of a bunch of artists, and the ocean is right there. Let me read you this script that I wrote. It's better than me trying to remember it, okay? Painting in this charming open-air casa studio, overlooking the authentic fishing village 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. Imagine every day creating in the art studio right on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Ah, that ocean breeze is wonderful, right? Welcome to one of my most favorite times in Latin America, Casa de la Artistas. Come and paint with me, beginners and experienced. Abstract acrylic painting and collage workshops, two, one weeks. Boy, boy does this ever sound like an advertisement, right? Refresh your creative spirit. Immerse yourself in the Mexican culture while you stay and paint on the top floor of this casa and studio. 
we'll be painting a lot. This painting workshop emphasizes loose, expressive, abstract techniques, creative tearing collage pieces, and paint splashing at the Casa's magnificent open air studio with the sweeping views. Boy, do I ever do we ever have sweeping views of the ocean and quaint village of Boca de Tamatlan. This is my pancation for me. I hope it's also a pancation for you. Give yourself some time out and reserve your space now. I'll see you down there in Mexico. Hey, thanks for watching. Hi there, painters. Hey, have you ever wanted to meet Van Gogh and Vermeer? I do. Hey, I'm Bob Burridge, and welcome to my Holland Riverboat Cruise. I'm going to Holland. I cannot believe to do a workshop on a riverboat cruise. Nine days of a bliss and imagination and accommodations are spectacular. You know, I did this one in Paris, all the way up to Normandy and coming right back down again. I didn't think I was gonna like it. It was spectacular. I said, let's do this again, especially of the accommodation, the crew took care of us, the accommodations, the luxury were just so well taken care of, the foods, as you can well imagine, the excursions, the entertainment. There's a lot going on on those riverboat cruises, but look where we get to go. We got to go to Van Gogh Museum, Vermeer. We get to see all that history, incredible excursions through those castles, and we get to paint every day. And the meals, we actually hurry back to the lunches on, on, on the cruise ship. It's a small riverboat cruise just for the meals. Let me tell you, they take care of us. One of my favorite things, I'm looking forward to it, riverboat cruises. That's where it's all happening. Small accommodations, educational especially. So you're gonna see a lot of museums, a lot of castles, and do a lot of painting time with me. I hope to see you there.